What's happening everyone and welcome to my Star Wars Outlaws review. Before we get into this I just want to say a big thank you to Ubisoft for providing me with access to this game. Now before anyone says anything does that mean I'm going to be completely biased and tell you this is the best game in the world? No, I'm going to give you my honest opinion of the time I have spent playing Star Wars Outlaws. So far on the save that I am using I've spent 39 hours and 39 minutes coincidentally playing the game. And if I'm completely honest with you, when I started off, I hated the game. I couldn't get used to the gunplay, I found the camera annoying and claustrophobic, I thought the open world was a pain to navigate and I couldn't really get to where I needed to go, and I was very tempted at that point to put the game down and move on to something else. But the Star Wars fan in me persevered, and I actually ended up really enjoying the game. So I've put together a list of my five most hated things, my five most loved things, and five honourable mentions for this review. Now as a reminder before I get into my list, please bear in mind that this is only my own personal opinion based on the 39 hours experience I've had with the game. It comes down to my own skill level, my own intelligence really at points, my own knowledge of games, that sort of thing. That's how I've had the experience I've had. It doesn't mean you are going to have the exact same experience as me. This is just my opinion based off what I've played of the game. To start off with, one of the things I hated the most was the camera. Now that might sound like a ridiculous thing to hate in a game, but I mainly noticed it when I first got the speeder bike. On the speeder bike, to me, the camera felt very low, and at times I couldn't actually see where I was meant to go. So, when I was using the bike, I started moving the camera around, and I felt like it made me lose control a lot, which ultimately led me to crash and into things a lot more. And I really hated that mechanic. I stopped using the speeder bike and I just started walking around on foot. However, when it came to walking around in buildings, I felt like the camera was very close to K and it felt very claustrophobic at points. For me, there's nothing to love about the camera and how it works in this game. In the open environments, it's just like a normal camera. Also, one of the biggest annoyances for me with the camera was in combat. When I was having gunfights, Every now and again, depending on where I was in the game, the camera would shift which shoulder it was looking over, which would completely throw me off what I was actually doing, meaning I was missing a lot of my shots, and then ultimately I would take damage and sometimes even die from it just because the camera had switched shoulders and I couldn't really see who I was aiming at anymore. After a while, you do get used to it. It's still an annoyance for me. After 39 hours, the camera is still a pain but there are field of view options that you can play around with to try and make it better for you. The second thing that I hate is the gunplay. Now that's really not a good thing to hate when it's a big part of the game, but it is a positive and a negative thing for me. At the start of the game, I felt like it was very sluggish and I felt like it wasn't very rewarding or satisfying to defeat enemies. The combat at long distance felt impossible due to how bad the aiming actually was, but I do think this is a game mechanic that's put there on purpose. At the start of the game, K isn't an expert in anything, but as the game goes on, you get to improve your abilities, the aiming does get a little better. The more I played of the game, the more abilities I learned, the more I customized my blaster. It meant I ended up actually really loving the gunplay because I was developing and learning more in the actual game and also just from using the controller. And because you could see a progression from the start of the game to how the gunplay was after you learned more abilities and improved yourself, it did become more rewarding. I do like the firing modes on the blaster, I think it adds a nice variety to the gunplay, and it does keep things interesting when you are fighting multiple enemies and you have to switch your blaster mode to combat certain enemies' abilities as well. Now the third thing I hate about the game is the navigation, or at least I did, because this could have come down to the fact I just didn't know the planets and I didn't know the environments very early on at the start of the game. For example, I spent a long time on Tashara early on in the game, and I spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to navigate around large rock formations to figure out how I got on top of them or got inside of them. However, after you become familiar with the planets and familiar with the locations, you do kind of learn how the game works and what to look out for when it comes to finding routes around certain obstacles like cliffs, for example. I still don't think it's particularly clear though, a lot of the time, where you are meant to go in order to get to an objective. Which is kind of annoying, but I do understand Ubisoft have said that this is an open world exploration game. They want you to go out and explore the world for yourself. They don't want to necessarily plot a path for you the whole time. However, it would be nice if there was an option where you could turn on sort of routes or paths to follow to certain objectives to save time running around rock formations or cliffs or even trying to find your way into certain caves to get loot 
all objectives. Like I said, after a period of time, you do kind of get used to how the game works, so it does become easier to navigate around the planets. But at the start of the game, it is very daunting, and it can get frustrating when you can't find the way you're actually meant to go. The fourth thing I hate is the treasure and the cosmetics. Now, it's not necessarily the treasure and the cosmetics themselves, it's more about how you actually find them. They are very difficult to collect, in my opinion. For treasure, the map does tell you how many undiscovered treasures there are left to find in a specific location, but you do have to spend time exploring the whole map to find these locations for yourself. A question mark will pop up every now and again while you are exploring a planet, but you have to be quite close in order for these to pop up. Other than that, you do just have to spend time running around a planet and hoping for the best. Cosmetics for me seem hard to obtain because you have to have certain materials in order to give to a vendor to purchase certain cosmetics. Or, in some cases, these cosmetics are locked behind Syndicate Reputation, but that's not so bad because to improve Syndicate Reputation, all you have to do is complete their contracts. It's definitely not the end of the world, this complaint, and it does keep you playing the game to explore all of the planets in order to find all of the cosmetic items. But with navigation being a problem for me early on in the game, it felt like I was never actually going to find all of the cosmetics that are in the game. I don't really enjoy running around the wilderness looking for question marks and then struggling to find my way to the actual question mark to start looking for the cosmetic or treasure or whatever it is. That's just me though. If you're not too bothered about treasure or cosmetics, then it doesn't really apply that much. The final thing I'm going to complain about is Nyx. And now this might be controversial, but Nyx does have so much potential. But for me, I don't really ever use Nyx. Apart from if I want a blaster that's really far away during combat, I need to distract guards to get to certain areas or the game forces me to use Nyx to open doors and that sort of thing to progress a quest. For me personally, I just don't see the benefit of using Nyx to pick up items I can run to quicker and pick up myself rather than sending Nyx, then waiting for Nyx to come back and then still having to interact with Nyx to even pick it up. I'd rather just run there myself and pick it up. Nyx themselves though, Nyx is a very lovable character and is a really interesting part of the story I think. I like how we get to see a bit of a backstory of Kate and Nyx as well. Nyx is a great character, I just don't feel like Nyx's use in the game is really all that useful, to be honest. Unless it is part of a main quest, or you have to use Nyx to open certain areas so you can explore a little bit more. Now onto the things that I love about the game, and this is a bit of a controversial one from what I've seen online. I do actually really love the graphics, for the most part. Apart from every now and again, I do think that Outlaws is visually stunning. Some of the graphics in the open world are breathtaking, and there are certain moments in the game where you kind of stand still and appreciate the graphics and the scenery that is in the game. And most of the planets do actually look amazing. There are certain moments where the graphics do look a little funky, and it does kind of take you out of the immersion a little bit because you are looking at it kind of thinking, ooh, that doesn't look great. But I do hope and think that this is partly due to the version of the game that I'm actually playing. I am playing a pre-release version. I'm hoping there is an update on day one or within the first week to upgrade the graphics so they are a bit more stable. The second thing I love is the reputation system and the syndicates themselves. I thoroughly enjoyed completing missions or contracts in the game and having to choose between different syndicates at certain points. There are definitely consequences of having a bad relationship with a syndicate as well, but it mainly means that you are going to have a much harder time exploring the open world and navigating through these planets because certain areas are controlled by certain syndicates, and if you don't have a good relationship with them, they will hunt you down, especially in the restricted areas. The syndicates as well, I think, are well written, and the interactions you have with the heads of the syndicates are really interesting and engaging. And sometimes there are twists within a syndicate storyline which really keep you on your toes and it makes them a lot more interesting in my opinion. I also found myself getting lured in every now and again by a certain syndicate. Not just one, by them all at varying points in the game. And then they would do something which would make me think, maybe I don't want to be as close to you as I first thought. And I think that's really good writing. I really do like how they work in the game. The third thing is the locations and the environments which kind of ties into the graphics. The planets and the environments on the planets are done brilliantly, I think. On Tatooine, for example, there are many iconic locations you can visit, like the Mos Eisley Cantina, Toshi Station, Jabba's Palace, and even the Lars Homestead. There's also a lot more. I can't name them all or we'll be here all day. And even the environments on the planets are really immersive. For example, on Akiva, the feeling of the planet when there is a storm is incredible and the visuals are superb. It makes you feel like you're really there and it's really happening. There are small details I love as well. For example, like 
the snow landing on Kay's jacket, shoulders, hair, even her face at points on Kijimi, and the footprints you leave behind in the deeper snow and the deeper sand, and even the speeder trails. I just think those details are amazing, and it really keeps you immersed. I hate nothing more than when you are walking around on a planet which is snowy or sandy, you're leaving no footprints, and it, I don't know, it just kind of takes me out of it a little bit. I feel like the planets are done perfectly. There are some planets I really don't like to be on, just because I don't like the way their environment is, but you never really get bored of being on them. You might like certain planets more than others, but that doesn't mean you'll get bored. The fourth thing I love about this game is the space combat. For me, it has a very Star Wars Battlefront 2 feel, which I absolutely loved. I love that game anyway because it is a huge part of my YouTube career, but the space combat has been done really well in my opinion. It does feel very overwhelming and you do kind of get a bit panicky when you are getting attacked by multiple TIE fighters and TIE interceptors or even just pirate ships to be honest. But the controls are quite simple and it feels rewarding enough when you do defeat ships in space. The dialogue as well when you are in space and just the whole atmosphere and what is going on really makes it feel immersive and it really puts you in the cockpit of the trailblazer and i absolutely love that i also really like the ship customization now the customization of the cosmetics is a little boring in my opinion you can just change basically the color or the pattern of the ship the color of the fuel and i think the trinket you can change as well but when it comes to the customization of the weapons that involves the type of cannon you're using the type of missiles and it just really allows you to customize the ship to how you want to play it or what you think is really beneficial to how you play the game one thing I noticed as well about the space combat is there is a huge difference between how good the trailblazer is in combat in space at the start of the game and then at the later stages towards the end game. There were many stages at the start of the game where I was getting beat very easily by the computer, but then towards the end of the game I noticed I was able to fight back and I was able to deal with a larger number of foes or more threatening foes for that fact. Now the fifth and final thing I love this isn't the final thing overall with the game, but for this list, is the Wanted system. I'm a massive fan of the Wanted system, but mainly because of what happens at the higher tiers of the Wanted system. At the lower tiers, I'm not too bothered, but at the higher tiers and what you have to do to get rid of that 5-star Wanted level is just incredible. I have, however, only really been in one specific location when I've been Wanted at level 5 by the Empire, so I'm not quite sure how it works when you are at a level 5 Wanted level when you are just free roaming a planet. But when you do get to the fifth tier of the wanted level on a planet, a death trooper squadron is sent to the planet to basically hunt you down. What happens at that point is there becomes an event to get rid of your wanted level. Now you can fail this event by simply just not going to it, but if you do go to it, you are gonna to have to take out some death troopers and retrieve a key card to use on a computer to clear your wanted level, get rid of the death troopers and get the empire off your back. In space, this works differently. At the 5th wanted level, you will have to defeat a Raider Corvette in order to jump to hyperspace and escape. If you don't defeat the Raider Corvette, you can't jump to hyperspace, so you can't really get away. The Raider Corvette is quite a difficult challenge, and this is what I was saying at the start of the game, I was getting beat very easily, I couldn't really do anything about it. Towards the later stages of the game, I was able to fight back and actually destroy the Raider Corvette and the TIE Fighters and get away. There are other Imperial ships that will get sent after you, for example like TIE Fighters, TIE Interceptors, and there is another class of ship that isn't quite as big as a Raider Corvette, but I can't remember the name of it right now. But it just makes that gameplay a lot more interesting, I think, and I really like the idea of taking down large Imperial ships. I really like doing that in Battlefront, and even in LEGO Star Wars, to be honest. So doing it again in Outlaws, I really enjoyed. Now before we get onto the honourable mentions, I just want to say there aren't only five things I love and hate about this game. I have played 39 hours and 39 minutes, it's just funny that they are both the same number, and I wouldn't have played that amount of time if I really didn't enjoy the game at all. Like I said at the start, I wasn't a fan, I didn't really like how it worked, there were a lot of things that I hated about it, but I persevered because I'm a Star Wars fan and I really wanted to see where this game went. And for me personally, I'm really glad I did. There were a lot of things that I really enjoyed, a lot of things that I really loved about the game. There are still things that I really don't like, and there are still things that I hate, but these are just the things that I thought people would be interested in hearing about. But now time for the honourable mentions. The first one is the story. The story to me is very engaging and surprising, as well as enthralling if you do follow the main chain of quests. It's quite easy to get lost and just go off and do loads of side missions and contracts and that sort of thing and stay away from the main story. But when you do get back into the main story, there are a lot of unexpected twists and turns. 
so the bulk of the main story is really great for me personally anyway however i do think for me again the ending leaves a lot to be desired this could be because there is dlc coming to the game but i really expected and wanted a lot more for the ending of this game when you play it if you do complete it you will see what i mean the ending to me was just a little bit of a sort of fizzle it didn't really spark and explode and be a great ending for me it just kind of sort of fizzled out a little bit the second thing is the upgrades i did love upgrading my ship speeder and blaster I enjoyed finding the experts and completing tasks to unlock new abilities. I was a little bit disappointed that once I'd unlocked the experts, I never really bothered with them again. I thought I would maybe have to go back to them every time I completed challenges and do a little quest or something like that. But once you do the quest to unlock the expert, you do the challenges and then you don't really have to interact with them ever again if you don't want to. I also wasn't a fan of needing to find materials to be able to unlock certain upgrades though. I felt like in some cases there wasn't much guidance on where to find these materials. You can just purchase materials from vendors and that sort of thing or find them lying around the world or in crates around planets but there isn't a specific way to find certain materials. I, Not that I know of anyway. The third honourable mention is cameos. We do get to see appearances from characters we've already seen or know about in the Star Wars universe. Some of these we do already know about from the trailers and that sort of thing, but there are some which are a surprise, so I'm not going to go into them much more. But for me, it was a good mix of new characters and characters we already know and love. The fourth honourable mention is the mini games, and more specifically, Sabacc. I've spent so much time playing Sabacc in Outlaws, and I do enjoy the mini games you can find in the world, like the arcade type games, but Sabacc for me is at the top. I do wish, though, at the end of a Sabacc game, you had the option to keep playing. It is really annoying, I think, that at the end of a Sabacc game, Kay gets up to walk away. Then you have to click to join the game again. You have to select your cards, then you watch her sit down, and it just it feels like it takes you out of that experience for me. Maybe they've done it to discourage gambling in the younger fans of Star Wars Outlaws, but it's a fun game to play, and it's just frustrating for me that it takes you away at the end of every match. I'd rather just stay there and have the option to continue, kind of like in Red Dead Redemption 2. When you are playing poker, you can just sit there and play poker for as long as you want. In Outlaws, you play Sabacc, you have a game, you get up, you walk away. Let me stay there if I want to stay there. If I want to walk away, I can walk away myself. Or if I run out of credits, maybe tell me I've got to walk away. But if I've got the credits to keep going, just let me stay there until I want to leave. Also, the options to cheat in Sabacc that you get through playing the game and learning different things and whatnot are really fun and it just adds an extra sort of dynamic to the game of Sabacc. The final thing I want to talk about is the cosmetics because although I've slagged them off in this video, I do I do quite like them. I do, however, also feel let down by the cosmetic items that you get in the game at the moment. The Syndicate cosmetic rewards are great and are, in my opinion, some of the best cosmetic items in the game, but I do feel like some of the cosmetic items are just the same as other cosmetic items in the game, just maybe with a different colour scheme. It is great that there is customization for outfits in the game. It's just not quite at the level that I was expecting for this game. I wanted a lot more variety. I didn't want to just have two or three outfits that are kind of the same, but slightly different in colors. Now that is everything I wanted to cover in this particular video. I am going to be doing a lot more videos on Outlaws because there are some things that I want to cover and show off and that sort of thing. But in terms of a review, I'm probably not going to do that again because I've spoke about everything that I want to speak about unless you have things that you would like me to cover and if you do please do let me know down in the comment section below like i said everything in this video is purely my own opinion it's just from my experience spending so long playing the game it doesn't mean you're going to have exactly the same experience or the exact same hates or loves for the game that i have it's just purely my own opinion based off the time i've had playing the game and my own sort of skills even as a gamer but that is everything for my review on star wars outlaws so please do let me know down in the comment section below what you think of what i've said and let me know if you would like me to cover anything specific in a future video. If you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to smash a like on it to show support for the game on the channel. And if you are new to the channel and you've enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all future releases on Star Wars Outlaws. But other than that, we'll see you in the next video.